So, I did a review last week. I had better makeup last week and a better hairstyle. Or no, it was only Friday. It was only Friday I tried to do this review and I tried to have it ready and everything. And I did the whole thing. And I couldn't understand why I didn't like this book. Selfies key. I'm sorry, it got damaged. And then it came to me why if you took out the time travel element from it, not a lot would change. It's about a young woman who inherits a farm. She leaves her life in California because her parents are dead and her boyfriend has just dumped her and whatever. So she sees this beautiful long abandoned farmhouse in Utah as an opportunity to start over again. And she decides, all right, I'm going to take it. It's going to be just fine. And then after that, she sees this screen door. It's like one of those wagon wheel kind of screen doors. And she says, I'm going to set this up. It'll be perfect. She goes through it. Poof. She's in 1901 where she meets Jacob. I don't remember his last name. It's not Jacob Black. That's, that's Twilight. But he's a Texas Ranger. But she doesn't know that. She doesn't even know she's in 1901. She just sees a little girl. And then the little girl says bear. And then Sophie Sanders, that's the main character, bolts from the porch and runs because she thinks an actual bear is chasing her. <sighs> anyway... Jacob finds her, asks her, what intarnation was all of that? She catches on that she's not in 2018-ish, I'm going to guess, because that's when, see, I know the author personally, and I think that is when uh, she sent it to me for beta reading because she got a revise and resubmit, and so I helped her as much as I could. I don't know how much help I was to her, but anyway, that happened, and it's ultimately a love story. I mean, it is a romance, and her and Jacob fall in love. There's another girl from town named Anna that wants Jacob, and she orchestrates this whole thing to get rid of Sophie, and my thing about this is if you took the time travel element out of it, if you just made her a girl from 1901 who inherited a farm close to Jacob's and one day while she was wandering, cluelessly wandered too far and onto his property and she's new to this city life because I think even in 1901, San Francisco was country life, sorry. I think even in 1901, like San Francisco was still a boom in town. I mean, wasn't there a big earthquake sometime? close to 1901 in San Francisco. I don't remember. <sighs> anyway, where was I going with this? She could have just happened upon Jacob's farm and then fallen and hurt her ankle. And she's there on her own farm being able to, from the cliff up above, see Jacob's farm. And that's the thing, is it could have worked that way. It could have 100% totally worked that way, and I think it would have actually worked better because the time travel element plays such a tiny, tiny part in it that it's almost non-existent. The few times time travel is mentioned is when she's going to the outhouse for the first time and she has to get there and then after she's done in there, there's this lady there that's like, here's a key. It'll open the door that'll take you back or whatever. She didn't give her very much information at all. She just kind of gives her the key and then disappears. And then the time travel isn't really mentioned until she and Jacob consummate their relationship in the cellar and he's all like, why aren't you a virgin? Because <laughs> you know, 1901, you weren't even allowed to show your ankles. So... There's a whole thing with the dog and a rattlesnake and then the dad's got to go get a new dog and there's a lot of looming threats, but none of them have to do with time travel. Yes, if Sophie hadn't gotten to the past, these threats probably wouldn't have taken 
place. But just some things that I don't like is that Sophie's instantly like, oh, whatever, it's 1901. I could most likely die in childbirth. There's so many things that I could miss. Like, I would not, no. <laughs> Obviously, I'm here on YouTube. I'm on TikTok. I am a very, no, no. I do not share those memes that say dumb stuff. Like, when the phone cord was attached to the wall, we were truly free. No, we weren't, okay? No, no. I like bombarding everyone on Snapchat and Instagram with everything I do every day. I couldn't handle it in 1901. I confess, bratty, whiny millennial over here. But uh, that's just my problem is that without the time travel, it's still the same story. And I got told several thousand times over and over again that if you take something out and it's still the same story, it wasn't necessary. So just one time Selena shows up, gives the key, disappears for over half the book, then they, then she comes back and she's all like, oh, huh, by the way, now that somebody has kid kicked the crap out of you and stole that key, you're going to probably die. It's the only thing that's keeping you alive. And then they go to a gypsy camp and yeah, sorry, this review contains spoilers. I should have thought of that before, but she gets told by somebody that you have to go back and you have to go to your own time and then after everything gets squared away i'm not going to give any more of that but it's in the back cover talking about how down here at the bottom the key got stolen from here one the only thing that keeps her anchored in the past a silver skeleton key given to her by a romani woman is taken during an attack selfie must depend on jacob to help her get it back the strength of their newly formed bond is tested as they race to discover who's behind the string of accidents and recover Sophie's key before time runs out. So that's on the back cover. That's not much of a spoiler. But after everything's all squared away and the right people are punished and whatever, Selena then comes out and says, okay, let's do this thing with the key. You've got to lock it in that door. It's a screen door with a wagon wheel. And blah 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 that's probably a spoiler i'm sorry um and then everything's fine and she says okay i uh, was and then they just briefly mention this guy named tobar that said she wasn't supposed to be there and this like i said those times are the only time the time travel was mentioned the only time however i do appreciate this book for what it is it is written by a friend of mine, and it is a print-on-demand book. Sorry about the mess. You can tell by that right there. It says that I ordered it 9th of July, 2020, and that's when they printed it. And it has made me just make a decision about a book that I submitted to these guys earlier this year, and they didn't give me necessarily an in stone revise and resubmit. They said, you're welcome to resubmit it. Now, as I've said on another YouTube video that is probably too long and you haven't watched, I have a book on the Kindle. I wrote this in 2020. It also has the print date on there. That's when I ordered a proof. I have no idea what I'm gonna do with the other two. I put one at the library, but this has a five star rating and everyone that people are buying it. All I gotta do is say, hey, I wrote this during uh, 2020 and this is the description. And I might tell you one day. Probably three stars. Um, I don't know, cause I've started this thing out doing horror movies and it used to be, did it actually scare me? Was the plot good? Was the characters good? And, uh, you know, you get your, and it was indie budget, hor low budget horror movies. So I'd give them a, like a participation star because I mean, some of these people weren't even working with like clip on ring lights. <laughs> they were working with like low, low wages. <laughs> so it was produced through a publishing company. They've been in business since 2004. So it 
not necessarily self-published, so I can't give it that. And then I liked most of the characters. I kind of just feel there could have been a little bit more depth to them other than Jacob being the handsome. And again, this is not my usual genre and I wouldn't have read this if it weren't for my friend writing it. I would have loved it if it wasn't Jacob just being the handsome Texas Ranger and there was a, there was a man named Abe who was a mute. It seems like there's a mute in almost all of these stories, just some mute guy who works on the farm. And then there was the irrepressible child of Jacob's that was really cute all the time. And it was too much. And Sophie was just clueless throughout the whole thing. And one thing I didn't like is, spoilers I'm not gonna get into, when she was in danger, she made many attempts. They were so futile and so weak and her heart was not in these attempts. Kind of like, girl, you're gonna have to be a little bit stronger than this if you wanna live in 1901. But there was just a lot that, so I didn't really like the characters and everything. I've already explained the rating system. So I guess I'm gonna give it three stars because even though the time travel element could be taken out completely and it would still be the same story, just tweak one or two things. It's still interesting enough. It's good enough like once for me. I started it and I finished it and I do not, I don't always finish books just because they're written by my friends. I usually buy them and then I will finish them eventually. And I guess the second star would be that, you know, okay, let's talk about this. When she wrote the naughty, naughty scenes between Jacob and Sophie, they weren't overly disgusting with words like chicken and kitty cat, you know, rooster and cat over and over and over again. But she didn't go and say she, uh, he unsheathed his massive bratwurst. Thank God for that. So I liked the naughty scenes. I thought the naughty scenes were well written, but ultimately I kind of wish the characters were a little more fleshed out. I kind of wish the story had a little more time travel to it. And I kind of wish Sophie had a little bit more teeth. And those are my criticisms of this book. I would recommend it for anyone who just likes a straight to the point lovey-dovey romance with some western themes tied in and maybe the tiniest hint of a time travel element. Read you the back half of Chenille. Recently released from jail, sociopath Chenille Patterson faces spending the remain fi remaining five years of her sentence in a halfway house. Content to just do her time and leave this life behind once her sentence is over, Chenille keeps to herself. However, plots are afoot to stop her from living that life she desperately wants. Temptation comes in the form of a new person in charge of the halfway house in which she resides, and no one is what they seem to be, even him. Chenille is determined to keep her dream of the future intact, even if it means she has to kill to do it. So I'm going to recommend both these books to you if you are into erotic thrillers, this is you, for you if you're into titch of time travel romance with uh, sexy farmers. Odie is a great author and I am very glad that things are happening for her, but this book just wasn't for me. Anyway, pick up the book, Sophie's Key, buy it, support it, get it online or get it via print on demand. It's probably even available as an audiobook. My